I'm Bob in Osterhout. I'd like to talk to you about chronic pain and how to deal with that in a healthy way. Uh, and my experience has been is that actually uh, can significantly reduce the pain levels and increase our ability to function uh, and uh, have an effective life and a satisfying life. Um, and I'm speaking from personal experience here. I had an auto accident in the 1990s where someone uh, ran a stop sign and hit me broadside and uh, caused some back uh, injury that resulted in surgery. So I have to manage my own pain on a, on a daily basis. And uh, many, much of what I'm going to talk to you about, I've learned the hard way. Uh, I've learned what doesn't work and, and from that uh, discerned what does work. Uh, and, and I have to practice this uh, virtually every day. As a matter of fact, I'm practicing now as we speak. Um, Chronic pain is different than acute pain. Acute pain is when there is a sudden injury or, or, or damage, uh, or it could be from an illness, and it's an indication that something is wrong. Uh, and you need to, if, if you fall and your elbow hurts really bad, well, you need to have that attended to and taken care of. Uh, but when the pain persists over time and, and you've had it checked out medically and, and uh, sometimes they have an identifiable cause, other times it's less certain. Um, but when the pain is chronic, uh, that's what I'm talking about. And that's a different kind of pain and there's a different physiology to that pain. Um, the, the principles of stress management that are described in part three of, of your text, Slow Down and Lighten Up, uh, are really helpful to keep in mind in managing pain effectively. Those three principles are the ABCs, accept, balance, and clarify. Um, acceptance uh, in terms of pain doesn't mean that the pain is good or that it's okay because pain is, is seldom good. Uh, it, it's, it's just there. And what acceptance does is just acknowledge the reality of it without any extra attention, uh, without being resentment, being resentful, without being frustrated, without being angry, uh, just choosing not to go there in your mind because actually research shows that uh, that intensifies the pain. Uh, and the more that people complain about pain, actually, and the more they, they awfulize about it or talk about how bad it is, uh, it, the, the pain actually increases in the identified places in the brain where this happens. Uh, and they've done this with tests where they've had volunteers uh, where they set up different situations. And, and those that focus on the pain, even though they're receiving the same pain stimulus as others, report an increased level of pain when they, when they complain about it and awfulize about it. So uh, acceptance is simply recognizing that's what I'm dealing with right now, okay? That's there. Uh, and you take it for what it is. Uh, I think of it as the Michigan weather, okay? In, in March, um, the weather can be anything. Uh, uh, the other day it was in the 60s and everyone thinks spring is here. Well, today, when I'm making this recording, uh, it's in the 20s and it was very cold again. But, you know, uh, we don't get angry about that because that's Michigan. And anyone who's lived here in, in any length of time knows that the weather changes in March. So you bring a warm enough coat with you uh, to be able to, to cope with that. And, and having that kind of attitude about the pain, simply it is there. Um, uh, it doesn't mean that you want it permanently to be there all the time. Okay, clearly you don't. Uh, and my experience is, is that people who practice this approach are frequently able to reduce their pain levels by two to three, sometimes four points on a ten point scale. So someone whose pain is at a, a, a nine, eight or a nine, uh, often can reduce it to a five or a six. Uh, by practicing these techniques. And a big part of that is the principle of balance. Uh, uh, balance, uh, and actually that's the place to start because balance makes acceptance easier, okay? Um, balance uh, initially, uh, think of in terms of getting rid of tension. Uh, physical tension actually increases pain and there's some understanding of the mechanism for this now. It seems that some of the, the, the neurons that are the pain receptors uh, that initially pick up the message of pain become hyperactive uh, as tension builds up. And so they'll pick up signals and they'll amplify those signals and the pain actually uh, is increased by the time it gets to our brain and we interpret it in that way. Uh, so it actually increases the level. And a common tendency is, is when we have pain, let's say if my shoulder is hurting, is to tense that, okay? Now that can initially numb it, 
uh, if there's a, uh, you know, and that may help you deal with an immediate crisis if there's acute pain. But in chronic pain, it really works against it. And the patterns of tension can create their own pain. Uh, muscles can go into spasm and, and significantly add to the pain. And, and it's not uncommon for people to come in uh, to work with chronic pain and, and once they resolve the tension to have no pain. Uh, obviously, there are many situations where, where that's a, a much more complicated picture and there are identifiable causes and sometimes not identifiable causes. But reducing the tension uh, reduces the perception of the pain uh, and stops making it worse and makes it easier to accept the pain and to then deal with it effectively, which is where the principle of clarifying comes in. And clarifying, um, basically, you looking at what works, okay? What increases my pain? What decreases my pain? Um, uh, you clarify to help you to balance. How do I maintain balance? Uh, for example, I know that my maximum sitting time is about 40 to 45 minutes before my back starts tightening up and my legs will go into spasm. So I just don't sit longer than that unless it's absolutely necessary. And when I do, uh, I pay for it and it takes me time to recover and, and I've learned how, you know, what I need to do to recover and if I try to sit before I've recovered, it's gonna get worse. Uh, so uh, over time, you can learn from experience, uh, but also simply paying close attention to it and, and err on the side of caution uh, uh, find what you can do and stay within a comfort level and then extend that. Uh, there's a tendency to go in the other direction too sometimes is just to rest and do nothing when we have pain and to allow it to heal and that's an appropriate strategy for acute pain. Obviously if you have a broken arm don't move your arm. Okay, uh, But with chronic pain that can create problems because muscle movement is required for maintaining muscle health and we lose strength when we don't move. Uh, and we lose a significant amount of, of capacity if we don't move on a regular basis. Uh, so the key is to recognize our limitations and to work within the limitations. And that's, those are questions that you ask and continually clarifying, what can I do? And that will vary day to day. Um, and it's a mistake, uh, an unclear statement to say this is a bad day, this is a good day. Uh, the question is what can I do now? It's a question that you can answer. If you declare it a bad day, first of all, it gives you a negative mindset, which, which complicates the process. Um, but secondly, you tend to not move at all then. And if you define something as a good day, well, there's a tendency to overdo. I, I frequently see that in people who, who come for counseling for chronic pain, is they have a good day and then they overdo. Uh, trying to get everything done because tomorrow might be a bad day and you can pretty well bet tomorrow will be a bad day because they overdid this day. Okay, so the key is to find the right amount that you can do each day and to do that. And then the next day becomes a new day and you do the right amount for that day. So you accept what's there at that moment and you work with it. Um, the, the balance techniques um, that are covered in the book and there's, there's uh, videos on diaphragmatic breathing and grounding, uh, meditation, uh, thought focusing and using rhythm, rhythm phrases are all very effective in, in reducing the tension and taking your mind away from the pain so you can maintain balance and be able to accept what's there and what's real, but to clarify how you can reduce it and how you can live your life most effectively in spite of the pain. So those are some thoughts on, on chronic pain. I hope it was helpful to you and I encourage you to uh, give the ABCs a try. Accept, balance, and clarify. Good luck.